Hello again. In this lesson, we will explore the importance of geriatric principles in ensuring proper care of elderly hypertensives compared to their younger counterparts. Let's discuss applying geriatric principles in the management of hypertension in the elderly. Remembering to treat patients conservatively is increasingly important with age. Elderly patients with similar blood pressures compared to younger patients have a lower baseline cardiac output, higher peripheral resistance, wider pulse pressure, lower intravascular volume, and lower renal blood flow. It can be concluded that because of these basic physiologic changes, treating the two groups similarly could be detrimental to the elderly patient. Also, understanding extraneous factors, including psychosocial barriers, direct patient costs, comorbidities, and compliance history is important to achieve the maximal benefit of any prescribed regimen. Before initiating any medical therapy, it is important to encourage therapeutic lifestyle changes. Over time, taste sensitivity is reduced and the elderly often paradoxically increases salt intake. So a recommendation to reduce salt intake should not be forgotten. The combination of non-pharmacologic therapies such as regular aerobic exercise, modest weight reduction in the obese, dietary sodium restriction, and treatment of stiff apnea can make a large difference in the medical therapy required by elderly patients and spare them from potential adverse effects of compounded pharmacotherapy. Geriatric medicine also proposes taking into account the function slash frailty slash autonomy status of older patients and adopt the antihypertensive treatment using three different patient profiles according to the functional status and autonomy for activities of daily living. For the preserved function profile, strategies should be those proposed for younger adults. They include functionally independent older subjects without medically relevant comorbidity or those with satisfactorily controlled disease symptoms and without significant impact on functional status. In these patients, full therapy should be considered to achieve outcomes similar to that of younger patients. For the loss of function slash preserved activities of daily living profile, a more detailed geriatric assessment is needed to define the benefits slash risk balance as well as requirements for the tailoring of the various therapeutic strategies. They include older adults with moderate functional decline and an absence of dependence in activities of daily living. They commonly have one or two comorbidities as well as moderate cognitive and functional decline. One should consider adapted or tailored therapy, including their prescribing. Lastly, for the loss of function and altered activities of daily living profile, therapeutic strategies should be thoroughly reassessed, including their prescribing when considered appropriate. They include older adults with at least one of the following. Multiple comorbidities. Severe dementia. Several geriatric syndromes. Or dependence in activities of daily living. Most patients in this group are aged greater than or equal to 85 years old. Preserving symptom relief and quality of life is a primary goal of care. Drug prescription should very often be re-evaluated for hierarchization of priorities and optimization. Because iatrogenic risk is very high, specialists 
should work closely with general practitioners, pharmacists, and caregivers. Thus, while keeping systolic blood pressure less than 150 millimeters mercury as the evidence-based target, antihypertensive drugs should be reduced or even stopped for safety reasons if the systolic blood pressure is lowered to less than 130 millimeters mercury or in cases of orthostatic hypotension. Thus, maintaining the 150 to 130 millimeters mercury on treatment systolic blood pressure values as a safety range. Other factors that may potentially be decreasing blood pressure and inducing orthostatic hypotension, including malnutrition, dehydration, and other medications should be identified and corrected. Let's discuss some special considerations in the treatment of hypertension in the elderly. The treatment of elderly hypertensive patients is complicated by many factors. Orthostatic hypotension, defined as a supine to standing blood pressure difference of negative 20 over negative 10 millimeters mercury, occurs more commonly in the elderly, owing to a blunted baroreflex response that occurs with standing. Initiating antihypertensive medications at low doses and making gradual adjustments and obtaining a standing blood pressure when increasing medication doses in symptomatic patients are part good practice. The American College of Cardiology slash American Heart Association guideline recommends making orthostatic blood pressure measurements at the index visit. It is also very prudent to assess older patients for orthostatic hypotension given the higher prevalence of this condition with age. This can occur as a result of polyneuropathy as in the context of diabetes mellitus. Non-neurogenic orthostatic hypotension is largely attributable to several conditions often observed in older adults, namely dehydration and polypharmacy, especially in case of vasodilators, diuretics, and psychotropic medications. In addition, the presence of large artery stiffness leads to impaired activation of the baroreflex and inappropriate blood pressure over heart rate response to postural changes. Arterial stiffness is also implicated in the increased variability in blood pressure observed in several other conditions such as exercise, postprandial blood pressure variation. Both increase and decrease in blood pressure are exaggerated in individuals with pronounced arterial stiffness and between visit blood pressure variability. Also, most patients with orthostatic hypotension greater than or equal to 20 over 10 mm mercury fall in blood pressure after 2 to 3 minutes of standing do not have symptoms and most with symptoms suggestive of a fall in blood pressure with upright posture do not have orthostatic hypotension. It is recommended to assess all patients 60 years and older at every visit for orthostatic blood pressure change, seated to standing, and use the standing, not seated, blood pressure as their target as long as orthostatic hypotension persists. In addition, elderly patients frequently take multiple medications for other comorbid conditions, so the possibility of drug interactions is high. This is particularly true for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs which may interfere with the actions of antihypertensive medications and may lead to poor blood pressure control. Polypharmacy may also lead to poor compliance in elderly patients, so simplification of the drug regimen is encouraged. Cognitive impairment is common in the elderly population. Hypertension has been implicated in the pathogenesis of cognitive impairment and dementia in the elderly. Elevated blood pressure during middle age predicts the development of dementia with aging. Furthermore, a high systolic blood pressure greater than 180 mmHg 
and a low diastolic blood pressure lower than 70 mm mercury increases the risk of dementia in older adults. Antihypertensive treatment lowers risk of dementia as shown in SYST thus EUR study, where active treatment is associated with a 65% lower risk of dementia compared to placebo. In treating hypertensive patients with cognitive impairment, simplifying the treatment regimen, regular follow-ups, and involving caregivers are all part of an optimal blood pressure management. This ends our discussion on applying geriatric principles in hypertension management of the elderly. Next, we will discuss managing hypertension in the very elderly.